Hey everyone, it's Sean and I am back with you to sort of look at color treating this photo in a style that's a little bit more reflective of a um, inspiration of mine from Instagram. Um, so I've pulled up Sam Colder's profile. Uh, for those of you who don't know Sam Colder, he is an exceptional um, travel and lifestyle photographer. Uh, actually lived in Toronto before getting um, sort of started into, uh, influen into the sort of influencer Instagram game. Um, he is an exceptionally good visual artist. I highly suggest uh, following his account because he just puts out such amazing content. Um, so I looked at this photo and I really loved the blue tones and sort of the muted tones of everything else except this uh, sort of reddish burnt orange um, that seems to be coming through a lot. Uh, plus there's an alpaca or a llama. So what's not to like there? Um, so we're going to sort of look at maybe trying to replicate some of these tones uh, and re-edit uh, this image, um, which I found online, uh, and see if we can sort of come up with something similar. So to do that, we're going to be using the uh, levels and the curves tools that uh, we just looked at previously. We're also going to be looking at hue saturation. Um, so uh, to get started, let's just use our level or our curves um, panel first. Uh, to be honest, curves and levels are a little uh, interchangeable, so whichever one you think you might feel comfortable with, you can try and uh, use. I'm going to go with curves um, just because I feel like there's a little bit more control. So first things first, I know in Sans version, the highlights are pretty white. Uh, so what I can do is I can just right off the bat take my top right um, anchor point and drag it slightly to the left just to make some of these bright whites really pop. Um, and then I can place an anchor point where the midsection would be and drag it down just a little bit. I can take my bottom uh, left um, anchor point and drag it up uh, to sort of make some of those blacks a little bit less inky. Let's just take a quick peek. Yeah, they're not quite super black. The whites actually aren't quite super white either. So let's just jump back into Photoshop. Drag our top right anchor point down below. Just maybe down slightly above the line there. Can create a second anchor point and sort of just adjust it like that. Cool. That looks okay. Great. Uh, and then I can switch into our different color spaces. Let's just see what the highlights in this look like. So the highlights here actually look a little bit yellow. They're not, um, th I know the, f the overall feeling of the photo feels a little bit cool, uh, but the highlights in those clouds, those are definitely yellow clouds and even our sky isn't 100% blue. Um, so that's kind of something interesting to look out for because right now our photo feels extremely blue. Um, so what I would like to do is sort of start playing around with this, uh, taking some of those blues out of the sky by placing an anchor point in the top right quadrant right at that intersection and dragging down to the right just a smidge. Um, we're going to have to put another anchor point sort of back in the center to bring our image sort of back into line. And... With, when it comes to curves, it really is all about these subtle, small, little adjustments. Um, we can probably create the shadows, because uh, the shadows here, um, they look a little bit on the cool side. That's probably where we're getting some of our cool uh, temperature from. So we can place a anchor point um, sort of down in this bottom uh, left quadrant here and play around and see what works well for us there. We can sort of, yeah, drag it a little bit up like that. And let me see what this sort of starts to look like. Okay. So yeah, you can take the um, bottom sort of uh, left anchor point and drag it out towards the right um, so that we restore a little bit of blackiness to our shadows. So that looks like the nice start to this, uh, if you ask me. Um, and now what we can do is uh, we can create a, where am I want to go next? Okay. What we're going to do next is we're going to go over to hue and saturation. We're going to create a hue and saturation level or layer rather. And uh, what we can do is we can start with the blues by clicking on this um, drop down menu from master to uh, any of these other sort of color values. It allows you to isolate them. 
And uh, what the slider down here does, it allows you to start to change the hue of that isolated color channel. And if you selected blues, you'll notice that now we can change the color of all the blues in our image. So by dragging them closer in towards the greens, we're effectively turning our blues more of a cyan tone, which is kind of cool. Uh, we can increase the saturation. Whoops, sorry. I keep hitting right click just barely by accident and then it jumps everything. So we can increase the saturation a bit, maybe up by 20. And we can increase the lightness so that it feels a little uh, more hazy uh, so that those blues aren't totally crushed, which is cool. And uh, you can see our sky right away is starting to feel a little bit more like the sky in here. In fact, I think mine is actually a little too saturated, so I'm going to bring the saturation down a bit more and just increase the lightness even more so. Really getting in that kind of uh, cool looking sky. Um, after sort of seeing that, I'm starting to notice that my clouds are not nearly yellow enough. So what I want to do is jump back into my curves panel. I'm going to switch over to our green uh, channel here. Um, and I'm going to start playing around and see how I can get some more uh, yellowy, uh, yellowy tones sort of into there. Um, sometimes it's a bit of a, it's a bit of a headache to get yellows because they're obviously not part of the RGB color space. You have to sort of combine a few different channels in order to get them proper. Uh, so you might have to jump between some of these guys here like I am. So what I did there was uh, using my green channel, I just put two anchor points, um, well three anchor points because one of them is in the middle, and I sort of pulled the greens down in the highlights and I pulled them down again in the low lights, uh, sort of adding in a little bit more blue to the overall image. And then I jumped back over to my blues and I adjusted them even further, uh, sort of creating a little bit more yellow um, in those clouds there. Uh, and again, just down at the bottom, sort of fiddling with that. Uh, so you kind of have to remember like green and blue make yellow um, and all those other color combinations when dealing in RGB to get the proper sort of colors going. Uh, we could probably look at red too and see um, if lead, less red will give us even more of what we're sort of looking for. And it kind of is. So you can sort of just put that midpoint back um, and make sure that everything else stays in line there. Uh, and our sky looks um, a little bit closer to what it should be. Cool. So that's it for the curves uh, for now. And we're going to jump back to our hue saturation. So if you double click on it, it will open up your hue saturation panel once again. And we can get to work on all the other colors that are sort of at play here. So it looks like basically reds and oranges and some yellows are really ruling this, um, this scene. So anything that's green uh, can effectively be taken out. So if we click on our master slider and come down to green and we just desaturate the greens um, pretty heavily, I would say, uh, that should have a good impact on things. We can also take the yellows down because there seems to be more yellows in play here and desaturate the yellows as well. Cool. Um, and now we can sort of take our reds and we can shift them however which way we want. Uh, they actually don't really need to be shifted. Whoop. They don't need to be shifted too heavily. Let me just take another look. They're fairly dark. Um, so what I want to do is take our lightness and really deepen the, the darkening color. So I'm just sort of playing around some more. This is the nice thing about these techniques is you really get a lot of room to play around. Um, our yellows, since we desaturated them so much, that'll kind of be tricky because there isn't really a designated orange uh, color swatch or color slider here. So you sort of have to make do with what we got. Um, I actually think by sliding the yellows a little bit more in towards the reds, we're getting kind of a really cool sort of tone of dirt here. Uh, and you know, as much as I'd like to fully replicate what Sam does with his colors, um, sometimes it's nice to just sort of do your own thing uh, and sort of create your own aesthetic. And so I'm just increasing the lightness. Um, it sort of helps to make the whole image feel uh, like uh, more arid and uh, like a little bit more washed out in a nice way. Maybe even adjust this a little less to the left. Just bring it back closer to center so it doesn't feel so completely off. Um, and in terms of magentas, because we do have some magenta shadows and such, um, we can sort of work on maybe adjusting those a little bit more uh, in towards 
some sort of color. You just want to be careful with this because you can already start to see it's getting a really muddy um, approach to it. So maybe don't fiddle with those as much as you would like. Okay, let me just flip back to our example and see what we're working with here. So we have blues that are fairly uh, desaturated and light. Uh, we have blacks that are really cool. We have whites that are fairly crispy white. Um, so maybe let's take a peek and see how we can get those whites back to being nice and a little bit more crispy uh, than they are here because here they look a little bit hazy, right? Um, so to do that, if we add a levels adjustment, right? So levels on top of everything else, you can see that our white levels are pretty, um, they're pretty non-existent at one end. And same with our blacks, they're pretty non-existent at the other. Uh, so if we take our white levels and we just crank them back closer towards the histogram, our image automatically brightens up nicely. Uh, we get some of our white highlights back, which is wonderful. And if you really wanted to deepen those blacks, you can sort of drag this in just a little bit. Uh, I don't want to drag it in too much because it's going to increase the contrast uh, and that's not necessarily what I'm going for either. So there we have it. Um, actually no I'm really not happy with that black adjustment at all so I'm just gonna just gonna put it all the way back there and that white maybe is a little bit too bright so just take that back um, and let's see what happens. No okay cool I'm fine with the output levels as well. All right, so let's just check back to our example. Not the worst. I mean, this guy's coat is definitely just not the same color as red as uh, these coats here, unfortunately. And it's not quite the same tones that are within the poncho. Um, but I would say that in general, uh, we sort of struck a nice tone. Um, and the cool thing is because these are all just adjustment layers, uh, we can go and turn them off just by running out our cursor and clicking over our adjustment levels, our adjustment layers rather, and you can really see the difference. This was the original photo, and these are all the color adjustments that we did. Um, we really went and uh, made some creative choices when it came to toning the imagery and creating a different uh, sort of mood and um, emotion that's coming from it, right? Um, this feels like a super saturated, uh, like bright sunny day full of adventure. And even though this also kind of feels adventure-y, um, it definitely has more of a cinematic approach, uh, maybe more something that you would see in uh, a movie or something like that, um, because it definitely has a distinctly different feeling to it. Uh, so that's something to keep in mind when you guys are working with your imagery, um, is what type of emotion are you trying to pull from this imagery? Is it warm and friendly? Is it maybe a a little bit more cool and unyielding. Um, just uh, things to sort of keep in mind because uh, color toning can have a very strong impact on how uh, your work is perceived. Um, so that's it for this video. I'll catch you guys on the next one. See ya!